guys, Sarah here from South Cobb Planning, and today we're going to talk about goals. All about goals. Why they're important, why we need them, and then how to set them and break them down. So I've got right here in front of me, it's a goal setting journal, it's from Erin Condren. It's a great little journal, but you don't need something like this. You can pick up something empty and set it up and make it your own. But first, let's talk about why goals are so great. Now, I love goals. They, they like motivate me and they get me moving in the right direction. They help me set better habits. Um, they really guide me in the direction that I need to go as far as like, <clears throat> let's see if I set a goal to, you know, um, uh, let me think of one off the top of my head you know, to eat better. So then I can motivate myself to make small little habit, habit changes throughout the day. Instead of eating this, I'll eat this. Instead of eating that, you know, instead of going out to eat, I'll stay home and I'll make, you know, something a little more healthier than what I orig originally wanted. So, and also goals help you organize your time. And then if you use in conjunction with a planner, you're really getting fine tuned down into setting your goals and hitting them. So when you write goals, having a goal journal, especially if you haven't ever set goals or if you're learning how to set goals, having one of these types of journals is super helpful because let me move my coffee out of the way. Because when you you open it up, it helps you. It kind of guides you on how to get started. So here we have, you know, getting a clear, um, getting clear on your values. And then here you can just do like a little value. Um, you can write them down, draw them out. Then here you're making, here it helps you make your goals more specific, creating an action uh, steps, getting your, getting yourself up, setting yourself up for success making space for your action steps and then here I want to create more space in my and then here these are like the different areas of your life that you can set goals in and honestly you should set goals in every uh, area of your life not just in personal life or not just in your you know finances you should have goals in every area of your life. And then here, giving yourself permission. Um, you're not always going to hit every single goal on time, on target, perfectly. So you need to give yourself a little permission to, you know, don't set yourself up for failure. Um, also, get support. You want to talk about your goals with other people and how, you know, if you have a loved one, if you're married, you have a partner, um, even if you have roommates, talk to them, help them, or get them to help you. And then your vision board. I've said this before, I'm not much of a vision board person, and honestly, the vision boards that I've seen, this is not big enough. Like, my mom has a vision board and it's huge and it takes it takes up a pretty large portion of her wall I mean she when she first did it she had like a picture of um, uh, Mount Whitney because she was gonna hike that when she um, for her 60th birthday she was gonna hike Mount Whitney and she did she hit that goal so I mean here I don't know if like you could get pictures that are small enough. So, and then my the way my mom created her vision board, it was really you know artsy, artsy and crafty and stuff like that. And she got all kinds of pictures and you know had all kinds of beautiful writing and you know just really made it um, visually pleasing to the eye. So when she walked into their office, she saw this vision board and she became motivated to hit those goals. So what's great about this um, little planner here is that everything is broken down into a month. They're not dated, but you can date 
um, you can put in the months. So here we start with breaking down your goals and then the steps toward your goals, your goal check-ins, and your to-dos. Now this is great if for one goal. So if you have a goal within your personal career, financial, or other, you can write down the goal, why it's important to you, your start date, your projected finish date, and the um, your finish date, important goal date, and then your created action plan, and then your small steps. So this is the this is important. You want the small steps. Uh, to really be clear on how you're going to hit this goal and break it down. So that's, and then here you have your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These would be how you would break down the goal, what you would need to do weekly in order to get this goal accomplished. So it has for the whole months of, you know, hypothetically January. And then here again, you would break down the one goal. Now for me, I am, I, like I said, I like, let's see, I think that in every area of your life that you should have Goals. You shouldn't just have goals in one specific area of your life. You need to have goals in every area of your life. And I know that can sound so overwhelming, but it's really important to create a five-year plan and in each one of these categories. So you would break down your five-year plan and you would ask, hold on, I've got some questions here. So for me in a 5 year go in a 5 year plan I have goals in my finances, my family, friends, health, fitness, faith, spiritual, freedom, or adventures, career and personal life. It's important to have um goals in each one of those areas even if it's something minor um like with your your friends you perhaps you want to make more friends I know as adults as we get older you know we don't have as many friends so you could say oh I'm gonna make make new friends so I'll join a Facebook group and that's a pretty that could be a it's a pretty easy goal to hit you join a Facebook pro you know join a Facebook group or I know that they have these dating apps for friends you know go on like a little date or something with um, somebody you know once every three months or something like that just to try and get friends and then you can maintain those friendships or if you don't need to make new friends you can just maintain the friends that you have by being there for them texting them calling them regularly so that they you know so you can maintain those um, friends so like a goal book like this is great for that because then you can write in okay did I call so and so to do I need to call so and so today I need to you know we're going on a trip tomorrow you know kind of thing so you need to really have goals in each one of those areas of your life um, so part of that five-year goal now I got a bunch of now for me I use a book like this because this gives me the freedom that I need and then I incorporate my planner in this. It is also helpful too when you are setting goals because setting goals is part of creating better habits you can get a habit tracker like this and then you would write down your different habits and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you could say I'm going to eat more vegetables Okay, I, hit, I did eat, you know, my five servings of vegetables on Monday. Um, I want to go for a walk, you know, for your health t 
type habits. You want to go for a walk every day. Um, you know, as a as your goal to lose weight. So you you know you didn't go Monday, but you went Tuesday. These type of habit trackers, these check mark type books, are great for that. For this, because they help keep you on target, so that you can create better habits for yourself. So um, there's also one of these types of books that is very that reminds me very much of this type of goal book. This is a productivity journal notebook from Erin Condren, and it is all just this type of page. So you have here where you can either draw, doodle, or or write some more. And here you can use these areas to break down your goals and your to-do lists. For you know, this would be for a day or a week that the things that you need to accomplish. And then you know you have your little ribbons here so you can mark your page. And then after a month or so, you know if you're starting out new making goals after a month or so create another page like a check-in page to see where you are where you're at with your goals like what do you need to improve what you did that was awesome and then what you're going to improve on next month so this 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 type of um, blank notebook is great for that um, where here it doesn't even almost doesn't even look like you have a check-in you know after so many months I know you have a reflection here in the back So here's your accomplishments. You always want to celebrate after you've completed a goal. It's such a motivating um, aspect of, of uh, accomplishing your goals. So here's your completed goals, your habits developed, how goals are working for me, goal setting worked for me, what I excelled at, what I can continue to improve on, habits that worked for me, things that I let go, things that didn't work. So I feel like you would almost need one of these type of reflections every, you know, three to four months just to check in, see how everything's going, what you might need to adjust, um, and then what what isn't working for you because not every habit that you're trying to create is going to work out for you, and that's another area where you need to give yourself a little more leeway as you are learning. Um, how to do how to set your goals and stuff so I use a book like this um, to set my goals and I actually use um, I, I don't know how, how to call it but it's I got it from it's called Beardy Brandon he's on IG I'm sure he's on YouTube as well but he and his wife sat down on an IG live and they went over how they set their five-year goals and so they have a list of uh, questions to go through once you have set your your five-year goals so it would start off something like you know if you're married if you have a partner um, you would sit down with that person, or if you're single, you you know just sit down with yourself, obviously, <laughs> and you would go down each goal. So, for um, hypothetically finances, for so for a five-year plan for your finances, you want to make, you know, you want to make 100k in five years. So, where are you at? You want to sit down and go, okay. For my five-year goal in my finances, I want to make, I want to be making 100k a year in five years. Now you sit down and you go, okay. So where am I at today as I sit here? I'm making 75k a year. 
All right. So, what did I do that, or what can I do to hit that uh, 100K? So I would, you know, maybe start a side hustle. Um, you know, uh, start a YouTube channel so you can start getting monetized. And if you start now and you work toward getting monetized within a year, you could projectively make, help make, you know, up the rest of that money for that. Um, then um, what could you have done better? Um, like this year, you could have focused more on creating a side hustle. Maybe write down some ideas, some jobs, you know, or, you know, deliver groceries or babysit or clean somebody's house. These are things, little side jobs, little side hustles that you could do that would help get you toward, you know, hitting that 100K. Um, what could you have done better? Uh, let's see, maybe not be so lazy. You know, instead of just letting your mind wander on, you know, scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, you could actually sit down with a notebook and write down some ideas. Um, so those are those are the types of questions that um, you'll find at the Bearded Brandon. Is it Beardy? Beardy Brandon? Um, I'll get it. I'll put it down in the description below exactly uh, where you can find that um, IG Live. But it was super helpful in, um, in, the, in, the, in my five-year plan. Let's see, I think I wrote down the questions here somewhere. Let me get out my little book here. Okay, so here they are. You want to ask yourself, where are you at? What, uh, where do you want to be in five years? What did you do last year that was amazing? What could you have done better? What can you do this year to hit that five-year goal if you're married? Um, what can you do to help each other hit that goal? Um, what prevented you from hitting that goal? Who can take ownership of the goal if you are, um, if this is like, a goal that is for the two of you, you know, like a household goal. Um, and then, as once that goal is completed, who would take ownership of the goal? So, um, like if it's a finance goal, who was the one that really put in the effort and the time to, you know, hypothetically reach that hundred thousand for the for the year or for the five year goal? So those are the type of questions that you'll see on that IG live. Alright you guys, so now I got on a long tangent about great how goals are and how great they are, so now let's break down a goal. Um, let's see, many years ago I wanted to get my bachelor's in psychology and just the thought of that goal was huge. Like I was completely scared, and so what? And I didn't know anything about goals. I just knew that I wanted to get my BA in psych. So I got a a book, a journal, very similar to this, and I just wrote in, you know, BA in psych. Big old circle around it because that was the end point. That's what I wanted. Now, how do I break this down? Well, for one, I didn't know anything about college. I didn't know how much this was going to cost. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I knew that I wanted to do it online. So, that would be my next goal. Um, I knew I wanted to do it online, but I wasn't sure if I would even be able to accomplish that, like have the motivation to keep myself going uh, and working through an on online class. It's, it's completely different. You don't have to show up to a class. So how do you keep yourself, you know, going to class if it's, there's nobody really to hold you accountable. So first, I needed to research online, online courses. And I also wanted to take a course, my first online course, 
that would be something that I would enjoy. Um, so, for my first step would be to research online classes. Just and I just was going to do it in my community college. I had no, I had no desire to go to a big university yet. I just simply needed to enroll. So my first step would be to enroll um, in my community college. So that's, and I had to do this to where it wouldn't become overwhelming, because just the thought. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. Just the thought of this goal was over very overwhelming, so I had to really break it down into one, two, three, four steps. But I didn't even want to look at two, three, and four, so I would just look at step one. Find a class that you will enjoy online that wouldn't be expensive and that would be at the community college and so I would have to enroll so the first step would be to enroll that's it and then once I hit step one cross it out come down here step two and I would give myself a week so within that week you know, you have your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so to enroll, I, the first day, you would just simply enroll into class, or for, I guess you would actually have to I actually broke it down. I knew. I guess I knew what kind of course I was going to take. It was going to be an art class. So I needed to take an art class. So I would enroll into the art class. So I would enroll in the first, my first step. And then I would enroll in my art class. Now this is all online. And so, you know, by Friday I would want to be paying for that class. So then I can start step two, which I, when I enrolled, God, this was so long ago, I think it was several months after I enrolled that I actually started to take the class. So I almost didn't even have to, I, I like I got a big break in, in the middle before I even had to step into step two, um, which would be taking the class. And yes, your goals are going to get messy. They're, they're not really that pretty. I mean, you could even use a pencil so that you're not making all these kind of uh, mistakes. But this is where having a planner would cut, like, something like this would be great. Because you can really focus on one goal. So after I had completed this class and I knew that I enjoyed going online, then I would have to come back start a whole new step one and that would be finding a four-year college just to research the four-year college and I gave myself several weeks because I knew that researching the a college wasn't going to be easy because I'm working full-time and then trying to find that little extra time in the process so you know step one researching the college um, and then I would have, I would keep all this information in here. So as I was researching the college, I would write down all my notes in here, in my book, so I knew exactly, okay, this college here offers A, B, and C, this college here, you know, it's more religious-based psychology, so I didn't want to do that. I wanted something that was more psychology, science-based, not religious-based. So, our, um, this college was going to cost me 60 grand, and this one here is going to cost me 40. So, once I decided what college I was going to enroll in, then I looked into financial aid 
do I want to be, do I want to take bank loans out to pay for my financial aid? Do I want to go government aid? Um, all those things, like, it was a process, and it didn't, some of it went pretty quickly, and some of it, you know, took some time. But I gave myself an end goal after hitting this first step here, after finishing this step here of in, um, taking and finishing this class, I gave myself an, an end goal of a month. One month I had to have all this information taken care of so that I could call the school and have a sound uh, and any questions that I had for the school I also wrote down in this in this journal. So I had everything right here. So once I decided on the college or two colleges, I would call them up and I would ask, okay, these are my questions. What is, you know, how much is, I know you're online, it says it's going to cost me 60 grand, but is there a way, do you have any kind of grants or um, scholarships that I can apply for? Any way to get that, you know, that end that financial burden less because then you also need to make a goal on how you're going to pay off your student loan. And that's a whole nother goal. <laughs> um, but it is something also to have in mind when you decide you want to go to school because at that time my parents were not going to pay for my my uh, my education. So I had to have an idea of how I was going to pay off this. Am I going to pay this off monthly? Am I going to um, buy a house? And what I had originally done did is I had bought a house and I refinanced my loan into the house once I, once I was completely done. And so, you know, broke up that that um, goal or that um, financial burden into the house and, you know, broke it into 30 years so I mean, my payment didn't go up very much. So that's what happened with that. Um, so, um, and I completely lost my train of thought here. Um, so everything would be in one book, and then you would incorporate your planner, um, because I, you, I could write in my to-dos here, and then take my planner, and write in, okay, today I need to call this school and talk to this enrollment person um, and um, and get these questions answered. When am I going to be starting? When's my start date? And when's my projected graduation day? So those would be all questions that you could ask and they would be in your, your gold journal that's blank um, kind of thing. And so you just eventually work through a blank notebook breaking down your goals. And so once I was enrolled the the intimidation factor of getting my um, BA in psych wasn't so big and so scary that now, okay, I'm enrolled. Now I'm already on a path. I already know what I need to do. So, every, you know, once I would enroll in a class, I would break down, okay, this is due on this day. So I know that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or my Friday, Friday is my um, homework turn-in, then I would start breaking down how and what I need to accomplish every day to make sure that I hit my due day on, um, you know, that Friday. But then that becomes more simpler and something that you can work through in your planner um, getting your homework done. So, um, but that was just one large goal in my life that was so scary and I didn't know anything about goals. I just knew looking at this was super intimidating and I had no idea how I would accomplish this. I just knew that I needed to start small because looking at the big picture was just so overwhelming. And it can be the same thing um, with fitness. You want to lose 20 pounds, so you know, you go in here in your journal and you just want to put 20 pounds. How am I going to do this? And every day,
how do I break this down? Well, let's see. What did I eat this last week that, what can I do to improve, basically? So, um, let's not eat at, let's not eat fast food. So, pull over here and pull out your little trusty habit tracker and you would write in, say that you want to do a 30, you know, don't even, you don't even have to do 30 days, just do one, start small, go one week, one week, no fast food. See how you do. And then if you hit that one and it was great, you didn't, you know, no problem, go two weeks. So now your goal is now two weeks. No fast food. I have a tendency to leave words out, as you can see. And if you hit this goal, you smash that goal out of the park, and you look back at your habit tracker, and you're like, man, I'm doing really good. I haven't eaten fast food in the last three weeks, and that's the only thing that you changed. You know, that's great. Another thing about goals, well, it's not another thing, but like I have said in the past, is you want small goals that are achievable so that you're not overwhelming yourself, overstressing yourself, trying to make something so much more difficult, especially when you're adding all these new little habits. You know, hypothetically, you, you go, oh, I want, let's do three weeks. No fast food. But you didn't quite hit this one. So you, you know, you probably ate, maybe you ate out once. So, you know, here you'll, you won't have all the check marks. Um, and that's fine. You need to give yourself that that, uh, what's it? It's in this book. <laughs> you need to give yourself permission. That's what it is. Permission to fail. You know, you're not going to be perfect. And sometimes, you know, you're really tired and fast food is just the, you know, can be the easiest thing to do, you know, on your way home from work or something like that. Or if you do eat fast food, maybe you, instead of getting a hamburger you get tacos instead if you know that might be the healthier choice um, and then you start adding in okay I want to walk every other day so then you start adding in to your habits walking every other day and what I recommend doing is just weighing yourself once once a month and you also need to measure yourself because Muscle weighs more than fat, and if you're starting off, and you're like, okay, I'm 150 pounds right now, and you're starting off, and you started working out, and you get on the scale a month later, and you're like, what the heck? Why am I more? If you're measuring yourself, you're going to see, okay, I've, I'm losing belly fat. I'm losing fat in my arms, so I'm actually hitting my goal, even though I'm not losing the 20 pounds, but I am making progress within my body. So I guess what the realistic goal should be is, you know, losing so many inches off your stomach. So, um, uh, let's see. That's another goal that would be good. That would be a good breakdown. So I keep a lot of everything in this book here. Let's see here. Oh, um, you could use that from the Beardy Brandon. You could use his questions on losing weight. Like, where am I at? I'm, I weigh 150 pounds. Where do you want to be in five years? You know, I want to be running a marathon. Um, what did I do last year that was amazing? I started walking every other, um, 
I created a habit last year of walking every other day and that's a habit that you still are carrying on. And then what can you have done better? Let's see. You could have probably added, you know, more fruits and vegetables or, you know, started eating a little more clean versus having, um, you know, eating so much processed foods. Um, what can you do this year to hit that um, five-year goal? Uh, let's see. Well, if you were wanting to run a marathon in five years, you better start running. <laughs> Um, those, you know, that's how you would break down each one of those, um, those goals is you would ask, you would ask those questions for each one of those goals. And then after you've answered those goals, you start breaking down your goal into, um, small steps. And then you can even ask yourself, um, and then you would even ask yourself, like, okay, now what do I need to do to hit these small little goals? You know, if, I, if you want to walk, you know, every other day, maybe you need to get up a little earlier. You know, if you want to go back to school, then, you know, of course you would have to start researching different schools and stuff like that. So, um, but what I found, uh, for my goals is having a journal like this to where you can write everything down and also you can put you can make this your vision board as well it doesn't a vision board doesn't have to be something big and glamorous that you do stick on the wall like I was talking about there is nothing wrong with having a little vision board like this that is in something that you can carry with you wherever you go you know, I mean, you, or you don't even have to carry with you wherever you go. Um, I also like the fact that this is small, that these are small, so that you can carry them wherever you're at. So, hypothetically, you're on your lunch break, you can call up, you could call up the school and get some uh, answers to your question. But you can also, you know, create your vision board within the pages, make it pretty, have your monthly check-ins, you know, put in a picture of yourself with your new weight loss or you buy new shoes, you know, as a reward for, um, uh, for all the miles you put on your old shoes. Um, you know, you buy a new workout outfit because your old outfit's too big, you know, those kinds of things. So you could take a picture of that and add it to your journal. And then as you hit that goal, you know, how awesome is that, that you can just sit there and look back at your journal filled with all this great stuff and then at the end you know you smash that goal so um but oh i this is for uh, like how you would break down the pages because you could break down the pages let's see there's 180 pages in this journal you could break down this page this journal into a five-year planner by it would be 36 pages each so you count out your 36 pages and then you could also use you can get cool little tabs and every 36 pages you know obviously your you put your very your goals um, your five-year goals in the front and then after every 36 pages you could add in a tab or you could even tab it out by goal as well. Um, so in that case, if you had, let's see here. So if you had eight goals, and I am terrible at math, that should be one of my goals is to get better at math. I have 180 pages. So you would have you would uh, you could break this down by 22 goal or 22 pages for each goal. That way, you could flip to each goal, and you can have a little vision board in your journal for each goal. So that's what I love about blank journals is the ability to add and to do so much with it. These are great. If you're needing a little direction, having something like this is great. Um, I also recommend 
if you get if you get a journal like this you should you don't have to get anything like this because you can make these in your um, planners and uh, you could even uh, unbind this and put it in your journal you know glue it in um, unbind it and then make it your own so you're not carrying around two books like this um, I know that Erin Condren also offers us all right, guys, I managed to knock over my camera while I was trying to get to this out of the drawer. So anyways, Erin Condren and one of their seasonal surprise boxes came out with these little um, books. The one I wanted to show you is this one. It's a little habit tracker. So you could do, just have four little habits here with your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday here. And then you can also write down here on the sides like what worked for you and what didn't. And they also came out with these. Like these could be a little to-do book of what you need to accomplish. So like you could put up here, this is the goal for this week. Um, like even for my YouTube videos, I have, I'll, I'll break down what I need to do. Like my, my goal be for the week would be to film one YouTube channel. So like if it's going to be, um, you know, like on a goal, on a goal uh, video. So I would write up here my goal video and then what I need to do to accomplish this goal. Um, I need to research goals. I need to write down, um, you know, if I talk about other um, goal type um, systems, then I need to write down who uh, came up with that system. Um, you know, pull out, like I should have pulled out little books like this, um, but I really didn't think about this book until the end. Um, so just little things like that, and then, um, you know, obviously then you need to edit, you need to upload, um, take pictures, um, whatever else that you need to do for, um, that would help you accomplish that video film, or that, that film. Um, you could also use this blank one to do a little vision boards, um, for yourself and then this one is just lined little book so like if you have an idea uh, that comes to your mind they can just quickly jot this down um, kind of thing on how to use these little guys um, if you were to want to do because um, you can do your goals in this it doesn't have to be anything big like this because even this could be overwhelming you could write down your goals in something small like this and then have these little books to work your way through those goals and then you get this nice little carrying case to go with it so you always know where it's at so um but i guess that's it on this video um <clears throat> If you guys have any questions on goals, I love goals, I love making them, I like smashing them, and I don't always uh, accomplish them as well. So if you have any questions on goals, let me know um, in the comment section below, and I will help you out as much as I can to try and get you guys uh, going in the right direction. Um, so if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like to continue watching videos like this, subscribe and stay tuned. And also, if you guys have any video ideas for me, let me know and uh, I'll try and get that out for you guys. So have a great one, stay healthy and stay safe. See you guys later. Bye you guys.